Uh, moving on, we've also had a lot of questions um, submitted re relating to the possible side effects of vaccines. Um, so, for example, after vaccination, we're advised to avoid strenuous exercise. Does the same apply to children? Um, and do we have any tips on how to ensure the child's safety? Can I direct it to Dr. Chan, please? Right. So the same advice applies to children. It is the same for anyone who has received the vaccine, which is that we recommend not to have any strenuous physical exercise for at least two weeks after the vaccine dose. And that means, you know, no jogging, no swimming, no cycling, no uh, PE classes in school, no sports, CCAs. Normal light physical activity is fine, which is what a child would normally do. So, you know, if you have a, say, five or six-year-old child who is normally just, you know, running up the stairs from up to their class, that's normal physical activity. Um, I think that's fine. Uh, the playground, again, uh, light playground activity is fine. What you don't want is someone who's like really racing around and around and around the playground in a race with their friends. But normal light physical activity is fine, right? What the child would normally do. When they're at home, they'll be, you know, jumping up and down the sofa. They'll be uh, running around the house. Again, that's all completely fine and uh, not something that you necessarily need to control. Okay, so when we talk about strenuous physical activity, we mean kind of sports, um, non-stop uh, uh, proper fiscal exertion and um, the same recommendation applies for that two weeks after the dose. Thank you, Dr. Chan. I think many parents are relieved to hear that because uh, I think most kids are generally very active. Yes. Yes. So moving on also, we've got about a question about the long-term side effects of the vaccine on children's development, especially how it might impact puberty and fertility. How would you assure them? Prof Toon, please. Yeah, um, I think uh, what's probably, as I read through the questions, uh, many parents do have concerns on the long-term effects of vaccines. Um, granted, we may not know, for example, what happens in 10 years or 20 years, but based from the immediate data that we have and also our understanding of how mRNA vaccines work, we don't think that it will affect puberty. We know that the mRNA vaccine at least uh, do not actually impact on pubertal development. And certainly we've given it in the adolescence, the 12 to 19, we have not seen any data, whether overseas or locally, that affects puberty. Nor do we think that it will uh, affect the fertility. And again, um, we have had adults uh, who have conceived it after getting the vaccine. We have adults uh, who are pregnant getting the vaccine and they have done well, delivered babies. So I think um, on the future fertility, based on what we understand, we do not actually expect uh, this to occur. But certainly, um, as in all things, we will say, uh, we will probably know with the benefit of hindsight whether this will uh, take place. Nevertheless, based on what we know, we don't expect this to occur. Thank you, Prof Toon. DDMS, you'd like to add to that? Yeah, just to add uh, to the issue about uh, long-term side effects, I think, but in terms of, I can certainly understand you know, the fears and concerns about long-term side effects, but I think one needs to also look at the biological basis right, for, uh, for such concerns. So, um, so for example, I think the, the vaccine is only in the body, you know, and it will be rapidly sort of uh, 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 disappears from the body after a few days. So, uh, the main uh, thing that the vaccine does right, is to stimulate uh, the immune system, right, to um, uh, train the immune system right, to uh, recognize uh, uh, future exposures right, to uh, um, the virus. Right? So based on this, right, there's no reason to expect that there will be a persistent long-term effect of the vaccine on anything. Right? There's also, in terms of the scientific studies done, Right. There's also no data to show that uh, the mRNA vaccines and the uh, antibodies produced in mRNA vaccines actually attack uh, the immune, uh, the parts of the body that are related to fertility, right? nor that it will uh, uh, affect uh, growth and development. Right. The other issue, of course, is that you know, I think often I hear concerns right, about the spike protein that we either produce or, back or contain right, in uh, all the uh, COVID-19 vaccines. But I think the thing to consider is that actually without the vaccines, uh, sooner or later, most of us are going to meet the, the virus. And when you get infected with the virus without the protection of the vaccine, right, there will be a 
far more spike protein produced in the body right, by the virus. Okay, right, and, and there will be far, a far greater sort of uh, potentially immune reaction right, uh, to the spike protein. You are concerned about you know, uh, those uh, uh, immune reactions. So I think that the concern needs to be taken in the context that, first of all, I think there are you know, there's very little scientific grounds right, to expect this sort of long term side effects. Uh, and secondly, that you know, uh, if you are concerned about this, then you should be even more concerned about being infected by the virus in terms of long-term side effects of the virus. So I think we need to uh, take some of these uh, concerns you know, uh, in, in context. Thanks. Thank you, DDMS. And the next um, category of questions that we have, some general concerns. Oh, I'm sorry, no, still on this slide. Uh, what are the results of the trial that, uh, whether, sorry, the pan, could the panel share uh, if there were any side effects or concerns from the KKH trial so far? I'll direct this to Prof Toon, please. Um, yeah, thank you. I think based on the children that we've vaccinated in KK, we are already on to the phase where we're giving them the second doses. So far, we have had uh, no significant serious side effects. Uh, all the patients uh, have done well. And uh, what we have seen are the typical mild um, local side effects or even the mild systemic side effects. So local side effects could be pain, redness, and swelling over the injection site. And some of the children did get very mild systemic effects like nausea, headache, fever, lethargy, but nothing really serious uh, even in this particular age group. So um, as uh, uh, Prof. Derek has already mentioned, based on what we understand from the vaccine, we certainly don't expect anything severe or serious uh, uh, in the long term, but of course we will be monitoring this very, very carefully. Yeah, I mean, just to uh, add to that, um, I think the, the aim of the trial is really uh, not to, you know, there are only 150 children, so the aim really is not to uh, detect uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, more uncommon side effects. Right? Yeah, instead, uh, we have looked at the studies uh, uh, conducted you know, uh, by the manufacturers, which has about you know, uh, more than 10 times the number of, of children you know, uh, who took part in the trial. We are also carefully monitoring the data coming out from the US, right, where I think, as uh, may have been mentioned earlier, um, there are already 5 million uh, doses given in kids, right, uh, about uh, five, uh, seven, so 7 million doses, with about 5 million uh, first doses and about 2 million second doses. So we are monitoring very carefully right, uh, uh, reports of, of side effects. Right? And then thus far, uh, apart from uh, myocarditis and anaphylaxis, there have been uh, no other signals of concern. Thanks. Thank you, DDMS. Uh, I believe that Dr. Chan has got some information to uh, add on about uh, trial on the Pfizer trial on side effects. Yeah, so um, the concerns about side effects. So when you look at the Pfizer trial, which was the first time children 5 to 11 received the vaccine, they looked about th over 1,500 children who had a vaccine, another 750 who had just normal saline placebo. Um, and actually what they found is that the most common side effect is really the local side reactions like Prof. Doon has mentioned. So it's really, um, you know, two thirds of children will have pain where we inject the vaccine and then the area may be a bit red or swollen and all that generally settles after the first two days. The other side effects that affect the general body, so things like being tired, having a headache, maybe some chills, muscle ache, you know, um, fever, these were actually less common than in the adolescents and adult group, right? So for example, fever, which is something that parents always do worry about, actually less than 10% of children had any fever versus up to 20% of those in the adolescents and adults. And the same for things like the chills and the muscle ache. So of course, you know, the child may feel tired, may have a headache, less than 10% have a fever. This was less severe than, less, less common than in the adults. So um, we have already vaccinated quite a lot of adolescents in Singapore. We have our own local data for that, and therefore we don't really expect uh, these adverse effects to be any worse in the 5 to 11 age group. 